We are approaching the end of our Lenten journey. I've enjoyed this journey of looking at what it is that God is up to in our lives and what God has called each of us to be up to. Today we look at how God lifts us up and how we can lift up others in and through God's love. Being lifted up by God's love draws us into a closer relationship with God. Throughout his life and his ministry on earth, Jesus drew people closer to him. He would welcome openly all who were there. There was no boundary, no one outside of who could be welcomed. So as we heard in our gospel reading today, even in those final hours, even as he was approaching his own death, he continued to give that message, that message of love and grace for all people. So today, let's look at what that means, what it means to be lifted up for God. Please pray with me. Loving God, help us to slow down, look more closely at our lives, and notice all that you are up to, all that you are calling us to do. Remind us of the ministry and the mission of Jesus, who came so that we may each have abundant life so that we may be lifted up to do your work. We pray all of this in your name. Amen. About a year and a half ago, I had the opportunity to check something off of my bucket list. I, for as long as I can remember, have wanted to go and experience the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. I love hot air balloons, as you can tell from my shirt. (laughs) I would watch them, and still do watch them, lift off and float through the skies, and Longmont, this is my favorite time of year. I can't handle just driving out there and watching all of them go off. It's amazing to me. I've always wanted to go to Albuquerque and watch this happen in real life. So for my 40th birthday... I thought, what better way to spend it than in Albuquerque at the Balloon Fiesta with my family? Because you see, every year it happens that first weekend in October, which is also my birthday. So I thought it was a sign that I needed to go. So we arrived that evening of my birthday, got tickets for the next morning, early, early morning ascent. To say I was excited would be an understatement. We woke up way before dawn. It was really dark and pretty cold, and we boarded a bus that took us from our hotel to the balloon field, to the balloon park, and we anxiously awaited the balloon glow and then later the lift up of all of the balloons. The buzz in the park was electric. The energy was contagious. Even though it was very early and very cold, if you'll ask my kids, we were all really excited and Mostly, the cold didn't matter, at least after the balloon started going up. It did matter a little when we were waiting for the kids. When the first balloons began to glow, the level of excitement rose in that park. And then, as the sun began to come up, the rest of the balloons began to get prepared to be filled with air to go up in the sky, to lift up off the ground. We staked out our spot and watched as one balloon went from lying in a ball to being laid out flat to going upright and finally lifting up into the air. It was amazing to see the visual transformation right before our eyes. I was so impressed by the sheer number of people that it took to get that balloon to go from flat to soaring in the sky. There were folks whose job it was to make sure that the bystanders didn't get too close. There were others whose job it was to roll out that balloon and make sure that it was ready to be lifted up. And there were still others whose job it was to snap the different pieces together so that it would go up and not, and not crash down. Each person, each group of people had an important job. And then there were the people who were in the basket, who were in charge of guiding that hot air balloon, getting it up in the air. All of them worked together. All of them 
did what they were called to do to make sure that that balloon went up. To see that balloon go up amongst all the hundreds and hundreds of balloons was amazing. I can safely say that this entire experience did not disappoint one single bit. As more and more and more balloons were prepared to go up into the sky, we began to wander around the park to get a closer look at more of the balloons. There were balloons of all shapes and sizes, characters, some for companies, some, there was a Colorado one, all different shapes, colors, so much diversity. The sky was filled with balloons, and my heart was filled with joy. The Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta draws thousands of people from all over the country and beyond. It's an experience like no other and reminds us of the power of community and the joy that comes from being in a community together. Time and time again throughout the life and ministry of Jesus, he stressed the importance of being in relationship and in being in community. Wherever he went, he drew a crowd. Wherever he went, folks clamored around him and wanted to know what they could do to live eternally, to be closer to God, to be in relationship. Jesus met people where they were and encouraged people to go towards their strength, to use their strengths, even when they didn't know what they were themselves. Jesus did that. Our reading from Jeremiah speaks of the coming of the new covenant, a new covenant between God and all of the people. The offer of simply a renewed covenant would bear witness to God's forgiveness. However, a new covenant goes farther than that, goes deeper than that. Through the words of the prophet Jeremiah, God promises to write the law on the hearts of all the people. That God's law will now be intrinsically involved in each person. We read that even God, if God restores the people to the land, even if God enables the people to experience prosperity and joy, and even if God shows love to them again, that will not be enough. The people must experience a change from the inside out. God is in the business of heart transformation for the house of Israel and for each of us yet today. This promise of God to change our hearts, to change us from the inside out, is a promise to do for us what we cannot or maybe will not do for ourselves. This promise might even come as a welcome word of refreshment to know that we are not alone, that God is there with us. As part of this new covenant, not only will hearts be changed, but grace and forgiveness will also be extended to all people. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more, says the Lord. The word for, at the beginning of that sentence, promises that something will happen. There's a cause. This is a possibility because of this. The words that follow after that for answer the questions of why will the Lord be known personally? Why will the law be written on their hearts? The answer is because I will forgive their iniquities and remember their sins no more. This final verse reveals what it is made possible through this new covenant. As Christians, it's not a far stretch to go from this reading from Jeremiah to the gift of the new covenant found in Jesus. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection served as a way for all of humanity to receive forgiveness. Forgiveness for whatever is needed. At communion, we're reminded of this new covenant when we drink from that cup, the cup of the new covenant. In our gospel reading, Jesus speaks again of what it means to follow what it means to follow him, and beyond that, what it means to trust in God. Jesus reminds those present that in order to follow him, they have to put away, put aside their way of thinking, their way of being. 
They have to reject the way that the society tells them to believe. And they have to hold tight to what God is calling on them. Now this brings us to our focus for today. What it means to be lifted up. The hope that comes through Jesus brings us, lifts us up. Jesus reminds us that when he is lifted up, he will draw all people, all things to him. This is Jesus' way of telling the people that he will not be there on earth forever, but he will be lifted up. And a result of that crucifixion where he's lifted up off the cross, resurrection where he's lifted up out of death, and then ascension where he's lifted up away from this earth, that Jesus will still be a part of us. Through all of this, the hope and the desire of Jesus is that by being lifted up, all that he is, was, and can be will be revealed to all people. After Jesus was raised, he was glorified. And he was lifted up. And then the disciples remembered. They're always after the fact. Remembering what Jesus had said. Remembering the message that Jesus gave to each of them. That being lifted up would draw people to him. In his name, they are now lifted up to share that message. To share the message of good news. Lifted up to share this message of the new covenant with all people. And now as I think back to that time at the balloon fiesta, I'm reminded of the many people it took to lift up each one of those balloons, each one of those hundreds of balloons. And in the same way, it takes many, many followers of Jesus to lift up that message of love and grace. So as a way to remember the power that we each have to lift up that message of grace and love, I invite each of you, before you leave, to take a balloon, all different colors, bright colored balloons. You don't have to blow them up, I promise, if you want to. They're little ones, so. But I invite you to take one of those balloons, stick it in your purse, stick it in your pocket, in your glove compartment, wherever it is that you will remember. Remember that you have been called to lift up the message of grace and love to all whom you meet. Let us pray. God of mercy and love, you have lifted us up. You lift us up every day to share your message. Help us to feel the support of community, feel the support of you in all that we do. Amen.